Hey YouTube, I uh, got a little video here about a uh, the operating characteristics of uh, KitchenAid brand model K45 stand mixer. This is a pre-solid state model, so it differs quite a bit electrically from uh, a modern unit, starting with the K45 SS made by Hobart in the starting in 1978 forward uh, after Whirlpool acquired Hobart uh, or KitchenAid from Hobart. Uh, they stopped putting the Hobart emblem on the uh, band that you see sometimes. Band on this one's not here. This unit puts the Hobart on the uh, on the on the uh, bowl mounting plate. It's all stamped in there. So it's a very old unit. They didn't make these after 1978. So somewhere between 1962 and 78, this was built. So you don't see this setup anywhere near as often as you would see the solid state setup. It looks similar. That plate there that, with the fiberboard on and the wires. That uh, doesn't, you know, you can see how it's related to the solid state, but the solid state one only carries a small amount of current to operate on what's called a phase control board, which would be located right about there. Uh, this unit is pure mechanical, electromechanical. It has no, so, no solid state whatsoever. Uh, has this capacitor that suppresses arcing at the points. It's anomaly a 0.1 microfarad. Uh, this one checks to be 0 0.0112113, something like that. So within 10%. Um, within Seems to be doing its job too. Uh, when I take it out of the circuit, the points arc very badly, and so it seems to suppress sparking very well. There's a diagram that you can get from the internet that shows the workings in this diagram is correct for a K5A or K45 pre solid states, both models, except the wire nut that bonds those two green wires together. Those, that's not showing here like it should, it should be right there but it's not. But other than that, it's all correct. So just to demonstrate how this thing works, um, I'll, tell, I'll tell a little bit about it. The uh, This plate, I'm going to unplug it so it won't start and make a lot of noise. The plate moves backwards. The main part of the plate moves backwards as you move the speed control to faster settings and of course vice versa. Those, there's a T-bar there and that T-bar, if it's, a, if it's, cl if it's a, either closes the circuit so that basically these two wires become connected together this red this yellow when the point when these when these points one 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 point carbon uh, point belongs to that one belongs to that and the bar is just a transfer bar so a simple switch when it's when those points are in contact the motor's running uh, directly on the line and there's no resistance in the circuit there's nothing going on it's just like plugging the thing into the wall directly the motor directly when the points are open, the uh, current is forced all of it to go through that resistor there that you can see. It has a 180 ohm resistor, heavy duty ceramic uh, wire wound resistor. And notice it's in parallel with those others. So uh, when the bar is shorting, there, yes, theoretically, there, there's a little tiny bit of current going through the resistor, but the vast majority goes through the T bar because of the much lower resistance of, the, of that than it is for. Um, the resistor. When the points are open, the only source of uh, power the motor has is through the resistor. And then the other set of red, uh, the third, uh, uh, and then this is the main motor winding wire coming in from the uh, from the uh, uh, the windings. That, that third wire at the top, and the fourth red wire is just the capacitor across the entire circuit. Uh, yellows are just the corresponding other sides. So it's all color coded for easy assembly at the factory or by a do-it-yourselfer. Okay, so in operation, I'm going to uh, run it at low speed because you may not be able to hear what I'm doing when I turn it on because of the noise. Running at low speed, I'm going to short those two terminals together with this, and it'll show it'll show you that uh, once you do that, all this governor stuff is no longer in play. It just runs according to it being directly across the line. So, speed number one. And then I'm going to short those together. See what I do here? So if you were to, I'm going to do the wall plug now. Take the wall plug. I'm going to do. The, I'm going to put it on speed ten. I'm going to do this. The same thing I'm doing, pushing the plug into the wall back and forth. That's effectively how that speed governor works. So to show the action of it, go back to. Um, Plug in, low speed. So the point, so see how the points are opening, closing rapidly. 
uh, with a duty cycle of keeping that resistor uh, in the, as a sole path of current for a uh, pretty long time compared to not, because if it wasn't, it would accelerate rapidly, as I demonstrated with that uh, needle nose plier across those terminals. As the motor speeds up, as I want it to speed up, the fiberboard part, the main outer part of this plate, is pushed backwards, forcing the points to be continuously closed for a moment until the motor accelerates enough to cause that this flyweight governor to push the T-bar back. See it spinning there? To push the T-bar back and start the oscillation again. So watch what that what that does uh, when it go from the next speed up. Plate goes back and then the governor goes back also until it gets to the set speed. Keeps on going, going, going. You can watch max speed. And then watch that watch those that T bar fall back uh, in position as the speed out of the motor. The inertia of the motor lets you see this. Zero. See how the points are wide open and then finally they come back closed. So that is uh, how the thing works, uh, by intermittently either putting the motor on the line uh, or through the resistor rapidly, it can set the, keep the speed uh, with the governor, it's fly ball, flyweight governor, keep the speed set. It's pretty much how this whole thing works. There's no circuit board anywhere up front. It's just, uh, it's like Sunbeam, very similar to Sunbeam, except Sunbeam didn't use this interesting sort of center tapped black wire, I don't know exactly, probably for spark suppression, but it basically takes half the resistance of the resistor and puts it on the um, uh, the uh, T-bar. So the T-bar, when it's open, say it's open, um, there's potential waiting at it, you could say, to be fed to the motor when it finally closes. When it finally closes, well, most of the current's going to go through the terminals at the top because of the very low resistance of the carbon contacts in that section of the T-bar, right? But for some reason there's an additional current, slight current flowing from that black wire to the mounting plate. Oops, must have run there. The mounting plate. And energizing it, keeping a potential there. So the only thing I can think of is Identical to Sunbeam uh, electrically, except for that tap wire, and uh, I ran it without. It doesn't seem to make any difference. So it might be for spark, uh, spark, uh, just keeping the points alive longer. Anyway, any questions? Uh, go ahead and post them because I'll have this thing back together fully uh, pretty soon. I'll put the gears back in it. Right now, like, like I said, there's just no gears. It's just motor spinning freely. I did this motor case. It's just laying by its weight on top of the stand. So. Uh, but I wanted to get it together and see how the motor performed after I did a thorough cleaning and uh, lubrication with a genuine Whirlpool mixer grease. Uh, you guys all take care. Bye-bye.